my desire is to bring astronomical events and objects down into your personal lived-in space. I've always been interested in the mound builders and people who make the pyramids. In particular, quite amazing singular sites that are in beautiful surroundings. So I love Bora Badur. There's a Mount Maru formed of many, many small stupas, you know, thousands of stupas. I love Machu Picchu. What a sighting. That's got to be number one for sightings. So I do like a place that has a powerful quality. What is that quality? I'm not sure. A road trader has that. I got a grant from the Guggenheim, and I wanted to begin this piece that I, you now begin to see. So I flew the western states because the topography from the Rockies to the Pacific and from Lake Louise down into Chihuahua is fantastic topography. I wanted a bowl-shaped space about 600 feet above the surrounding terrain. But I wanted the site kind of in a, well, really in a stage set of geologic time. So you're out of the time set of the construction of mankind. This way, you're already on the way toward getting into astronomical time and things above. If you believe to be involved in forming the experience, you do have to preload that and to try to make that occur. First, the sun and moon space. And the sun and moon space, this is a space that has the very tall basalt black triangle within which is the image stone, which is a solid stone going all the way through that is white marble. There are many events that happen each day, some twice a day. Some things that happen once a year or twice a year um, centered on the solstice or one of the solstices. It's a little bit like a camera scura and this is in fact that because we've made that tunnel probably the longest <laughs> refractor telescope that there is. You know, so you're looking up this tunnel, which is in fact a telescope, and you walk through the telescope. And then proceeding up, you see this circle and it becomes larger. This is obviously the space through which alignments pass that go down and illuminate the sun and moon chamber. But then you round over and it begins to keyhole and you go off the center line of the circle and suddenly you realize that this is becoming an ellipse. So that what once was a circle transmogrifies into a very long, elongated ellipse. And of course, a circle is an ellipse, and we've been taught that, and we know that to be true, but it's one thing to, to know those things and then to see them happen. So one of the things that happens here is that this idea of where we begin to actually feel and understand almost with the body things that we intellectually knew, because it's not something I discover and then have captured for you. It's something that you are there to discover yourself. You have to complete that yourself. You leave the east portal and go down this ramp and then there is the joining of where the two ramps would come together and then you go down in a spiral to the crater's eye to this chamber that's the in the center of the crater. One question to always ask is why go inside to see out? You can see the sky anytime you want. But that's not telling the story of how we see the sky and how our perception and our seeing forms the sky. 
prejudiced perception. It allows us not to see things that really are as they are. We award the sky its color, and we're quite unaware of this. Because we do, that means that I can then change it. I can work something around you that then will change your perception. And I think that artists working with the nature of perception, or how we go about doing this, is also of great importance, because we do have this prejudice seeing that many of the artists are trying to take away that prejudice. If you use light to tell a story, then you're not using the power of light, you're using the power of the story, which has its own power. But I wanted to use it without that, so I can't have it with an image exactly. No image, and then there's no object even. And there's no particular place of focus, no, no spot of focus or particular place to look. So if you have no image, no object, no focus, well, what, what do you have left? <laughs> Well, for me, it then takes you right to this primal relationship to light. We drink light. The importance of doing this at Roden Crater in terms of making events that mark our time here is largely because these events form us. That is, moods change with cycles of the moon, they certainly change with the seasons. They change with the weather, which has a lot to do with sunspots and all that we see around us. I am marking these things that have to do with our sensing the sky, our living in the sky. My thought there is that it's important that you go alone, almost as though you're coming to a ruin, and you discover these things yourself. You, you go through it, and these things are your discovery. So that's what I'd like to impart if I can, and it's, it's beginning to unfold. I'm learning how to do this. I'm getting some command of this medium of perception worked with the material called light. 